Last time we left off with um, the D Broglie relationship and that relationship was lambda is equal to h over momentum or h over mv. And we said that since massive particles had large masses, the lambda was small. And this is called an inverse relationship. So an inverse relationship just means that if one thing is increasing, the other thing decreases. If one variable is increasing, the other variable decreases, okay? So for massive particles, the wavelength is very small. It's almost negligible. You don't see it. For small particles, the wavelength is large, and therefore it is observable, okay? Now we will talk something about the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle so it actually follows along quite nicely from the de Broglie relationship and we'll see we'll see how so okay so let us assume that we have some wave along the x-axis that's described like this Okay, the wavelength for this wave is this. So the wavelength is basically when you complete one pattern. Okay, so I start at the middle of a maxima here, I go down, then I come up, and then I end at the second maxima. Um, so basically this is one wavelength. Okay, and then these wavelengths make up the whole wave. Okay, so a wave, um, some wave has an associated momentum, and we will say that momentum can be described in a particle like fashion, and we'll describe it like this. Um, and it has some momentum and it has some wavelength. Here, lambda is very well defined right you know what lambda is based on this picture so therefore since you know lambda therefore you also know momentum so this momentum is very well defined but what's the position of this particle or this wave what's the position so let's say I want to find the position at y is equal to 1 and say that's this point over here. So is the particle here? Is the particle here? If I were to extend this wave, okay, like this, is the particle here? So you can imagine that, you know, we know the momentum very well, but what we don't know now is the position of the particle okay now let's say that we have we combine many waves to get something called a wave packet if you guys have done introductory physics courses um, wave packets are introduced when it comes to sound um, or or the or you know or harmonic oscillators in in that in that physics block they teach something about wave packets but what for our understanding we're just going to use the basic idea of a wave packet and that is you combine many waves to get a well defined wave in terms of um in terms of bounds okay what i mean by that is you can have something like this So you can have a wave that, that is clearly in these bounds, okay? So outside of these bounds A and B, the wave takes on a value of 0. And inside these bounds, there's some value um, of the wave. Now my question to you is, what's the lambda? Well, as you can see, you don't know the wavelength here at all. 
right? What's the wavelength? You can't figure it out. So you might not know the wavelength here, but what you do know is you know the position a little bit better. So now the position of the particle is somewhere between A and B, right? Um, in this example, it was somewhere along minus infinity to positive infinity. It could have been anywhere. But here, it's confined in the range of A and B. So the, the idea here is that if you know the momentum, then you're losing out on the position. If you know the position, you're losing out on the momentum. And this is the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So Heisenberg's uncertainty principle says that the uncertainty in momentum times the uncertainty in position or in, in the uncertainty in position times the uncertainty in momentum is always greater to equal greater to or equal to h over 4 pi okay or basically to the order of 10 to the minus 34 because if you divide h by 4 pi i mean it, it's not a huge difference right like h is equal to 6.636 times 10 to the minus 34 you divide that by um a number close to 20 and it's not going to make a huge difference to the whole number so the point is is that um this relationship has to be greater than or equal to minus 34. So basically what it means is if you know one of these, if it has a high value, then to maintain this relationship, the other one has to have a low value. And this is the uncertainty principle that Heisenberg came up with. And this is in very, very stark contrast to classical mechanics in where if you knew the position and the momentum, then, then basically you know those things with 100%. Like I was saying um, in the very first video, I gave a silly example that if you and your friend are playing catch and you throw the ball and it lands in your friend's hand, then you know for a fact that it is in your friend's hand. But if you throw the ball, but it had a quantum nature to it, you could throw it towards your friend, but it might land somewhere, let's say you're in Las Vegas, and then next thing you know, the ball is somewhere in, in Nevada, or it's somewhere in um, Ohio, or it's somewhere in Canada. So that is kind of the uncertainty principle that, you know, if you know one of these... Um, one of these variables, then you don't really know the other variable. So it turns out that classical mechanical system or quantum mechanical systems are are not well defined based on x and p. They're not well defined on these two things. They must be defined by some other variable. And we will talk about that variable um, later on. Okay, so I want to finish off this video by saying that psi x, or I mean sigma x, is inversely proportional to sigma p. So that's the whole idea of the uncertainty principle that if you increase the certainty in one thing, then you lose out on the certainty in the second thing. So you can never know these two things with 100% certainty. And this is, the, um, this is the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle.